Hello and welcome to Storytime. I am your Storytime reader, Miss Nikki. This week we are going to explore the states of matter with our favorite fairy, Esther. You may remember this character from our previous book titled Fairy Science. Esther is different from other fairies because she believes in science and in this book Esther and her fairy friends use the scientific method to explore the world around them. I am curious to know about their discovery. Aren't you? Let's read and find out together. Fairy Science Solid, Liquid, Gassy Written and illustrated by Ashley Spires Esther does not believe in magic which is kind of a big deal when you are a fairy. How does Jack Frost make snow? Magic! While the other fairies wish on stars, Esther conducts experiments. While they learn spells, she studies the law of density. A la kazoo! I wish! She's a fairy who prefers a microscope to a wand. Esther is dedicated to science. She and her friends use the scientific method to explore the world around them. First, they ask a question. What happens to ice when it warms up? Then they do some research. Don't lick it. They each make a hypothesis. The ice will change color. It will turn into liquid. It will become a raspberry. They do experiments and they examine their results. Finally, they draw their conclusions. When ice warms up, it turns into a liquid, water. I think mine peed. Oh boy! Esther and her friends try to share their discovery at school, but none of their fairy mates are interested. So, as you can clearly see, the rising temperature causes the water to change from solid to liquid which is the real reason the ice melts. They are too busy planning for the magic fair to listen to her silly logical theories. Now, Esther, we all know that moon sneezes are what makes the ice disappear each spring. Last year's fair didn't go well for Esther. It turns out magic enthusiasts are surprisingly clueless. Who has ever heard of molecules? Esther, you have such an imagination. While her fairy mates work on their magic projects, Esther focuses on solving scientific problems. How does the compass needle always point north? Last one in the pond is a rotten toadstool. And there is no bigger problem. Sploot! Then a missing pond. I have mud in my ears. I have mud up my nose. I have mud in all the places. There are lots of ideas about what happened to the pond. An ogre drank it. It went down the drain. It fell in love with a mole and moved underground. It went for a stroll in the woods and got lost. But only Esther and her science pals observe the facts. Maybe it flew away. Fig asks a question. Where did the pond go? Clover does some research. This has been the hottest spring in years. Esther forms a hypothesis. We know water is a solid when it's very cold and it turns to a liquid when it warms up. Together they conduct experiments and examine the results. Aha! At last they draw their conclusion. The pond is up there. It did fly away. It didn't fly exactly. When the sun heats up the water, it turns into gas and floats upward to the clouds. The pond will be back when it rains. It's called evaporation. Since there is no scientific way to force it to rain, Esther and her friends just have to wait to see if her theory is correct. I've noticed that science 
seems to involve a lot of waiting. They wait and wait and wait a little longer until finally it starts to pour. Eureka, they were right. After a few days of steady rain, the pond is restored. My potion worked. It's amazing that water can change states like that. No wonder some fairies think it's magic. The water cycle is almost magic. And it gives Esther the perfect way to bring science to the magic fair. I'm solid. I'm liquid. I'm gassy. The almost magical water cycle, not actually magic. Did it work? What type of spell makes the water change? Water is a shapeshifter. Does water make everyone gassy? Has Esther finally made everyone excited about science? The winner of this year's Magic Fair is... Blossom Dinglepuff for her report, Glitter Boogers. Make your snot sparkle. I am a Pisces, so I understand water. Apparently, the Magic Fair isn't ready for science. But the judges appreciate a good costume. Esther, Clover and Finn get first place for Best Magic Fair Costume Design. Esther may not have won any trophies, but like all good scientists, she knows that discovery is the best reward. And there is always something new to discover. Esther's Rainy Day Experiment you don't have to be a fairy to do a science experiment. Why not make it rain indoors? You need these things. Experiment checklist. Hot water. One large glass bowl. Food coloring. Salt. One small glass cup. Plastic wrap. Ice cubes. Spoon. First, pour the hot water into the bowl so it is above a quarter full. Ask an adult for help. Add food coloring and a pinch of salt to the water and give it a stir. Next, place a small cup into the bowl. Be careful to keep the cup dry inside. Quickly cover the bowl with plastic wrap and place a few ice cubes on top. Wait 10 minutes, then check out your water cycle. The hot water heats the air causing water vapor to rise. When the hot air hits the ice, it cools back down. As water droplets form, they fall into the previously dry cup making rain. That's called condensation. The end. Esther and her fairy mates asked questions, made hypotheses, did research, and showed their conclusions to learn about the water cycle. I bet you have many questions about the world too. And just like Esther, you can use the scientific method to answer those questions because that's what scientists do. Click on the description box below this video for a free Google slide copy of an experiment using the scientific method or watch the previous read aloud, Magnets Push, Magnets Pull and download a free copy of the Google slide scientific method magnet experiment. Thank you for listening. Please join me soon for another read aloud. Until then, take care of yourself and each other and stay curious.